caught my wife cheating day before anniversary. Update. A brief report on what has occurred since the previous day, followed by a few more information. Thank you all again for your help. I spent the night before D-Day at a friend's home. Wife visits sons and his wife's home. Both children are aware of the reason for their mother's eviction, an affair, but no more information is available, sat. Drive to the cottage with the dog in the morning. Continue to stay till Monday. On Monday, report to the office and begin making phone calls. Banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions call the lawyer I employ for my business, and he will suggest a divorce attorney. I called her and agreed to see her on Thursday. She says what I want to hear, so I employ her. I speak with my human resources manager and tell her everything close professional friend. She suggests someone for IC, so I phone and schedule an appointment. I've seen her twice and it's been beneficial. Friday, a week after. D-Day, son phones and says it's strange having mom in their little apartment and asks if she can come home. I'm giving up. She returns on Saturday, but I'm on my way to the cabin. It was below zero all weekend, with night lows in the minus 20 to minus 25 area, just to demonstrate how much I didn't want to be near her. Monday, I drive straight to work. People at work adore my lab, and he is often indulged. I stay late, come home, and can't bear looking at her. Go watch TV in the basement till she comes down and asks if we can speak about it. I tell her I'm not ready and that she should leave me alone while she's here. Fry. The HR manager inquires about my well-being. Lousy, I tell her that I've been sleeping on the sofa or chair in the basement. She proposes I get a new bed, which is a fantastic idea. I'll go get one. Delivery is on Saturday. I considered burning the old one, as others have advised, but I don't want to clean up the mess. I go to work on Saturday and wait for the call that Ruck will. Be there in 30 minutes. I go out and get two subs for the delivery men while I wait for them. I tell them I'll pay for their lunch and offer them each dollar twenty-five if they can do me a favor. Leave an old mattress against a tree near the street and return for it at the end of the day. They are perplexed, but I urge them to allow me five minutes. They will receive it before they arrive. I go in, remove the bedding, and something clicks that I have to inquire about. I grab a can of blazing orange spray paint that we use to identify properties we're working on and put wife cheated in our bed in bold letters on the mattress. Guys go on and leave it against the tree. Later, my wife complains that they neglected to remove the old one, which I assure her they will return for. I don't believe she is aware of what I did. On Valentine's Day, she tries to be all romantic and prepares a wonderful supper that I don't eat. Attempts to initiate closeness, I tell her I wouldn't F her even if she was the only woman on the planet. She responds, we don't make love. I inform her that since she decided to F her boss, we haven't made love. I'm at a loss for words to describe her expression. She walks into the kitchen, trying not to weep. I guess this is as good a time as any to invite her inside LR and have a seat. I ask her what she wants to do, which I realize is a bad move whether we should simply divorce and move on or attempt to cure this. She assures me she's prepared to go to any length to put things right, to make up for what she's done to me. I'm not sure how she'll make it up to me, but I tell her she has to inform the rest of the family before we can attempt to solve anything. She concurs. That was the most recent update that was deleted. 2 17 My mother. My father has been gone for three years. Her parents, sister and brother-in-law all came over that night. We're all sitting in LR, and I'm trying to stay as far away from her as possible. They begin with, what's wrong, we love you. Everything will be well, as if someone is very ill. I look at her and warn her that this narrative will not tell itself. Her father stares at me, and I think his eyes are screaming oh no, as if he knows what's about to happen. I have to give her credit. She cried her way through it and poured her guts, even when I walked in on them in our bed. After a lengthy, awkward quiet, she asks, someone say anything. I say what they're meant to say, that you're a nasty person, that you've wounded me more than you know, that you've torn my heart out, that you've thrown away 29 years of our lives and damaged our family, not to mention what you two have done to his family. Was the truly so fantastic that it was worth it? I simply kept going, all the rage, 
hate, and betrayal I'd been harboring within erupting. I had no idea I could be so harsh. Her mother eventually says, enough. No, she replies, she deserves it all, and she goes up the stairs, weeping. Mom jumps up to go after her, but Dad says no. Leave her alone, she has to suffer for a bit before this gets better. We converse for a bit, and they give support and tell that if I need anything, I should simply ask. I've been in IC, and I believe I'll be okay, but I appreciate it. I assure them that despite everything, I still love her, and that she will need them more more than I do. I retire to bed and sleep better than I have since D-Day. Before I leave the next morning, I walk into the guest room and see she didn't sleep and has been weeping all night. I believe that for the first time since D-Day, the severity of what is occurring has really dawned on her. I believe telling her family and having me go off on her as I did helped her get out of the affair fog. She seemed to be displaying genuine contrition. I tell her we need to speak, and she listens more than she talks. I explain that I'm 99% leaning towards divorce, but I'm still clutching to the 1% life raft. That if there is any possibility, she must do what I ask in order to assist me in getting over this. She says she'll do anything as long as she doesn't have to do anything right now. I recall telling her a tale I told her after my father died. When I was 17, my father told me that you would face adversity in life, but how you manage it will reveal more about you than the adversity itself. Never, under any circumstances, make crucial judgments while you are unhappy. At the time, I was thinking, ya dad, whatever. I start crying as I remark, I wish he was still here so I could tell him I was truly listening. She stands up and offers me a hug. I don't return the embrace, but it feels lovely, which terrifies me. She sits down again, and I tell her she has to go. I won't be able to recover if I see her every day. We must go to North Carolina. She accepts and asks if there is anything more she can do. I tell her I'm too emotional right now to think clearly, and I'll leave it to her to figure out what else. I phone my lawyer on my way to work to ask. If I can see her today. We meet for coffee since she is on her way to work. I explain her what's been going on with the 99-1% and so on. If I take that route, ask her to draft divorce papers to get things started. She suggests that if I have the time and the means, I locate an apartment for my wife and pay for the first month's rent. That if it gets all the way to a court, this will demonstrate my good faith in reaching a peaceful settlement. I agree, and she promises to have something for me to review by Monday. When I get to work, I phone a real estate broker for whom we've done a lot of business over the years, inform him of the situation and what I need. He claims to know a decent rental agency and will have him contact me. He calls and says he'll start searching and call me back. He calls back with a suitable option in terms of pricing, location, and so on. I visit with the property manager and hand over a check for the remainder of February, March, and the deposit. When I arrive home, I tell my wife that I found her an apartment, that I paid for it, and that she has to go see the manager and sign the lease. It's just a six-month lease, so that's a benefit. She expresses amazement that I moved so soon, and I explain that I wanted her to stay away from our boys. While she is out, I phone several movers. Fortunately, it is the middle of the month and they can come on Saturday. When she arrives home, I tell her I'm done with movers and ask her why he hasn't asked her about money. She seemed perplexed, so I informed her that I had cancelled credit cards, taken my share of our joint account, and cancelled my debit card. She seems irritated when she claims she doesn't blame me. It turns out she hasn't needed to spend anything since she hasn't gone anywhere or required anything during her time spent between our boys and at home. I also learned that she phoned her workplace and requested a leave of absence, citing personal concerns. They allowed her to take her paid vacation before beginning her leave of absence. Friday, I tell her she may take anything she needs for her new apartment, as long as she leaves me something and not anything from the basement, as well as a few of my family heirloom items and my new bed. I also tell her that I'm willing to give MC a go, that she should locate three different ones, and I will choose the one I believe will be the best. I leave early on Saturday morning and return to a half-empty house, including the television. That's okay, I'd like a larger one anyhow. My buddy still has my booze, so I stopped and got up my favorite bourbon, 
which I am enjoying while composing this. Please accept my apologies for the length of this post, and thank you for sticking with me thus far. Tomorrow, I'm going to the gym, making my favorite chili, and shopping for a new television.